Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my series of RHCSA exam practice sessions where I'm going to take a look at the topic of conditionally execute code within the Create Simple Shell Scripts objective set. I want to remind you that this is not intended to be authoritative information insofar as I am looking at this from the perspective of if I were preparing for the exam with this objective, these will be some of the things that I would practice. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers as well as invite everyone if you enjoy the content of the video to make sure you click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Now I want to take a moment to um, to clear up some potential confusion as far as you, you've probably seen a video prior to this where I've said I've already passed the RHC as SA exam. So this isn't truly a practice session as far as, you know, I haven't taken the exam yet and I'm preparing for it. But since I have passed the RHCSA exam, there have been two categories of objectives that have been added, one about shell scripting and the other about um, containers. And so what I'd like to do is kind of add on to the previous videos that I've done and go through some practice sessions as far as if I had not taken the exam yet, this is what I would do to, to try to prepare for these topics. One other thing to note is for the videos I'm making about the um, shell script objectives, I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of bash scripting as far as you know what a variable is. You know that you start a script with um, the shebang and bin bash. If you would like me to make a video of like the you know, level zero basics of bash scripting, feel free to leave a comment in this video. And um, if there's enough interest in it, I'll take the time to, to make a, a very basic video about starting with bash scripting. I do have uh, one video which I'll um, link in the upper, I believe it's going to be upper right hand corner if, as you're facing the video of one that I did kind of on the basis of scripting that does have some bash basics. But if you want something specific to bash basic scripting, then let me know in the comments and if I have time, I will get around to making that video. The conditionally execute code objective is wanting to test whether or not you know how to write a script in such a way that not all of the script is going to execute all of the time. And there, there are many like real world uses for this. For example, let's say that you have a script that you have written that you want to have it check to see if a service is running and if not start the service or you'd want to write your script to where you know it checks that service and if it and if the service is running don't do anything else leave the service as is versus if the service is not running then you would have the script start the service and that that kind of logic is is what this this objective is about in in my opinion I don't think they're necessarily looking for some real complex like structures with conditional executing code. It's basically, you know, can you do if statements and such? So if I were practicing this, easy way to do this is set up an if, if statement in the script. Before I do that, though, I want to go over a couple of things that you're going to need to know to understand like how the if statement is actually functioning and, and, and what's going on. And the first thing is dealing with uh, exit codes. So I'm going to do, I'm in the temp directory here, ls, and that gives me a listing of some stuff here. And I'm going to echo a special variable, dollar sign, question mark. And the result of that, of echoing that variable is zero. This variable, dollar sign, question mark, gives you the exit code for whatever the last command is that you have run in bash. So the ls command completed successfully. It has the, the desired output that we want. And so therefore its exit code is zero. Zero is usually the meaning for everything is fine. Nothing was broken. For example, let me do just some random text here. This is going to complain that that um, command was not found. And if I were to do the same echo question mark, that the exit code there is not zero. It's 127. And there are a couple of other exit codes that correspond to, to different things. For example, if I were to do ls, but give it, you know, dash five, that's, that's not a real parameter for ls. And we'll look at the exit code for that. And that is two. So this idea of exit codes that are not zero generally 
indicates either a, a failure of a command or in the case of us wanting to add some um, logic to our scripts to execute just certain parts based on the condition, these, these exit codes are going to be for zero is true and anything not zero is false. So that leads into the idea of needing to test expressions. And there is a command called test, which does just that. It, it checks a particular expression. So I could do test the string foo equals, you can do a single equals as well, but my habit has me doing double equals foo. Nothing's returned, but it did return an exit code, which is zero for true. If I were to do test foo and is it equal to the string blah, all right, it should, famous last words in IT, right, give us a code that's not zero. In this case, it's, it's, it's going to be one. Now, if you were to look at the man page for test again, you'll notice right here where it says expression. These single braces are, they're, they're actually, it's actually a command itself, I think. So if I were to do which, that should return, yeah. So it's an actual command itself, but from what I gather, it basically is running the test command. There, there may be some more nuance to it. Uh, if you know that nuance, feel free to put it in the comments. But doing the bracket with a space after foo equals foo is going to yield us the same result as if we did the test command. Now there is a syntax for double brackets and pretty much all the stuff I've worked with, with if statements and such have used single brackets for the testing. The double brackets, if I recall correctly off the top of my head, is something that is specific to I think bash and ZSH. So, you know, there's a chance that, that, that they won't work um, the same in other shells. They also, I think, offer maybe flexibility. Uh, that, that, that may or may not be the right word, but they offer some flexibility of, of syntax. However, in my experience, which is not vast yet, you know, um, maybe if I do this video again in 10 years, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little bit more of an opinion on it. But in my experience, I haven't found a use case where I've needed to do the, the double brackets, the, the, um, you doing expressions in uh, single brackets has been uh, single square brackets rather has been sufficient for me. If you have particular uses for the double square brackets, feel free to put that in the comments because I, I myself would be interested to know, and I'm sure anyone else watching the video would be as well. So now that we've, uh, we have a method of testing an expression, we understand the idea of exit code zero is true or worked, exit code not zero is false or did not work. Now we can actually look at doing a, a script itself. So I have this little test.sh script that I have in my uh, temp directory, and I put it there because we're going to be using a couple of user accounts with that. And so in this script, um, I'm going to make a little variable, we're going to call it my name. We're going to set that variable to who am I? Now, one tip for the for the exam, um, if you're having to, to, to write a script on the exam and you're not 100% sure how a, a command is going to work, have your terminal window open at the same time. I've done this several times when I've been developing scripts, both in Bash and in PowerShell, where you know, I, I think I know what, what I need to do for, for a command, but I, I can't think of it. And so rather than putting it in the script and just waiting for something to break, test it out. So if I wasn't 100% sure what who am I would do in my current environment, easily do that in your uh, terminal window. And you have an idea of, of, of what'll, what should happen with your script. So I have the my name variable. And if I wanted to... All right, let's say I have a statement of echo, my name is my name. I'm just going to save the script. I've already set it to executable. I know that by the green, but if you're curious, I can do ls-l test. That shows that it is executable. Um, otherwise, you can use change mode, chmod, to make the script executable, because in default situations, you're... Uh, your UMask is not going to allow for the executing of the script. So if I were to run this script, 
it's going to do exactly what it says. You know, my name is whatever the variable of my name is set to, which is set to who am I. But let's say that I wanted the script to do this. Let's say I only wanted the echo to occur if who if the user, the who am I, is going to be Eddie. So I would do if our bracket, my name, actually I'll put that in quotation marks, double equals for um, string comparison. So if my name is Eddie, close bracket, then I tend to do another layer of, of um, tab, then echo that statement, and then we end an if statement with fi. Not everything ends with backwards, like case will end with esac, however, like for loops, and while ends with done. So anyway, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. So if I were to run this script again, it's going to do exactly what we expect. If my name is equal to Eddie, then we run this as my name. I've set up another user on this particular VM, so if I were to SU into that user, That's going to be a good video. I got the password on the first try. And if I were to run the same script, tmp test.sh, nothing happened. Well, the reason is who am I in this context is going to be test user. So therefore, this evaluated to false and thus did not do its then statement. Now, if we wanted to add something to happen if the, if the statement is false, if the expression is false, then we can add else. Let's do echo my name is not Eddie, but is my name. So now let's run that script again. And notice the output this time. It chose the else. One thing to keep in mind, and this um, this might seem kind of obvious, but it is something that, that has been a gotcha for me in the past working with this, is all if cares about is whether or not the exit code of whatever command is used returns a one or a zero. So what I mean by this is you don't have to do brackets with this. You could easily have something like this. If test, my name, oops, variable, my name equals Eddie, then echo was success, else echo was failure, fi. Let's run the script again. Notice that we got the was failure because the command, if I were to do command test my name equals Eddie, then that's going to return a non zero exit code. Likewise, you could do something like this. I'm going to add another if statement here. We're going to do echo, see, my name is Eddie, then echo third success else echo third failure and fi so let's run it once more notice how this says third success that's because this echo statement is pretty much always going to return zero you know the the an echo statement is is rarely going to to fail so if is really just checking to see if whatever the either expression that's being evaluated or the command that's being run, if its exit code is zero, then that's going to, to be a true statement as far as if is concerned. And then of course your else would be something that runs if, if your statement is zero or excuse me, if your, um, if your exit code is something that, that is not zero, 
You also have a structure of L if, so you can also do else if, and then do, do another test there. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Remember that this video and the others in this series are not necessarily authoritative information, but rather it's how I would prepare for, for the objectives if those objectives were the ones I needed to focus on for the exam. If you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like and also subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you the next time.